Greetings from our church. My name is Dave Ferguson. I'm a licensed minister with the United Church of Christ, currently entering my ninth year as a licensed minister. I am the assistant pastor at Memorial UCC, and I do bring you greetings and well wishes from Memorial UC. Our thought for this day, gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for all the gifts in our lives. We give you all praise and do so with thanksgiving. Enrich our lives so that we may learn to be better stewards of the word. make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before God, our Maker. For God is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Join me now in our unison prayer of confession. Lord, we turn to you with open hearts and open minds. We confess that we have not always done those things that are pleasing to you. We admit that we have sinned and that we have done things that would not stand up to your test of true faithfulness. We ask for forgiveness and ask that you wipe our hearts and minds clean of any evil thoughts or desires and fill us with your love, your grace, and your mercy. Amen. Our first song for today is one that I'm sure is well known to most of you, if not all of you. Holy, holy, holy. For our joys and concerns today, I was made aware of one that we need to lift up in prayer this day. Uh, Chuck Zacharias is having some health issues, and we would ask for your prayers. We would ask for God's healing presence to be with Chuck uh, this day and always. I would also ask that uh, he lift up any of you in need of a prayer, that he comes into your hearts and enriches you through healing powers. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, on this day, Reign of Christ Sunday, we come to you with heavy hearts. This virus that is going around is bringing about so much concern and uneasiness. We would ask that you keep us safe in this trying time, that you keep us healthy, that you keep this community free of the virus, and that you find a cure that can get out to mankind sooner than later and that we can resume normal times once again. For all in need, Lord, look into their hearts, answer their prayers as only you can. For this church, we ask that you continue to lift it up within its members, enrich them, help them, guide them, lead them. Show them the way, Lord. Shine brightly in their hearts. We pray for good health, we pray, as always, giving you all praise and thanksgiving. In your name we pray. Amen. We take a moment now for a time of silent prayer, after which we will come back and share together the Lord's Prayer using debts and debtors. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Grant us this day as only you can, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. This next song that's going to come to you, I want to introduce it. It is entitled, I Can Only Imagine, and I know most of you know this song. But the version that you'll be hopefully taking time to play, pay attention to, touched my heart in a way that has truly left a permanent scar on my heart. It is truly special, and I hope it is as special for you as it is for me. I can only imagine. <laughs> Scripture for today, our first reading is Psalm 100. All land summoned to praise God, a prayer of thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all the generations. Our second reading today, the Gospel reading, is from Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. The Judgment of the Nations. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory, all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it we saw you a stranger and welcomed you? or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at the left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me new food, no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothes. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of God for the people of God. The message for today is entitled, Christ's Assurance to You and Me. This Sunday, 
is Reign of Christ, formerly Christ the King Sunday. It is the last Sunday in Pentecost and the last Sunday in the church year. On this Sunday, we celebrate the reign of God and the Lordship of Christ. Next Sunday starts the Advent season, which kicks off the new church year, and Christmas is just around the corner. <coughs> For the past 51 weeks, we have heard word from God and have found hope, peace, joy, and love. Here are the words taken from our Gospel reading from Psalm 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Do these words bring you peace? Did you not hear the words of assurance offered by our Lord and Savior? A Bible is filled with assurances from God. You have only to grab your favorite Bible, occupy your favorite chair, open the good book, and let your heart and mind be filled with words that can truly bring you peace and comfort. The best part is this can happen any time during the day, and the result will always be the same. Let go and let God. Christ is at the very center of the meaning of everything for all people. The question of Jesus Christ is not of secondary but primary importance in the lives of his followers. In other words, not just something we think about on Sunday morning or when someone asks us what church we go to, but a question that shapes our whole life. For early Christians, and as for us today, following Jesus is a big time game changer. It means turning our hearts and minds from the empires and kingdoms of the world, such as materialism, prestige, power, to the reign of God, which was at the heart of Jesus' message. In the United Church of Christ, we claim as our motto the words of Jesus, that they all may be one. These are more than just beautiful words or a nice thought. They are at the heart of being the Christian community. No matter what divides us, and it seems that countless things attempt to do so, in the larger scheme of things, and even with our congregations, even with the committees and boards of our churches, we are bound together by love. God love. That is more powerful than our church fights over worship or theology or decisions about whom to include in our life or even the monthly calendar or who, or who has a key to the kitchen cabinets. Assurances from God. Wow. Just for fun, I brought up Google on my computer and typed in assurances from God. It came back with 3,830,000 hits. Checking Reign of Christ resulted in over 18 million hits. Seems to me that we are on to something great. Open your hearts and minds and believe. We need to remember that none of us made it this far without help. Lots of help. From parents, family, friends, teachers, pastors, coaches, and colleagues. We need to remember the people who have gone before us and paved the way. People who have given their lives for our freedom, safety, and well-being. Someone paved the road you drove on this morning. Someone stocked the shelves for your grocery shopping this week. Someone milked a cow, harvested wheat, sewed your clothes, built your home, kept the lights on, get my point. We need to remember that in America we have been extraordinarily blessed. We need to remember that when we get right down to it, we all have much more in common than we have things that divide us. People who remember these things and live with a grateful heart grow in grace and compassion and empathy, kindness, and yes, problem solving and encouragement and strength for difficult days. They bring out the best of each other, not our base instincts. That's how we make the world a better place. So what are you feeling inside right now? Do you feel the Holy Spirit stirring within and feel warmth that comes from Christ's love? Are there any new thoughts running through your minds? 
Believe it when I say Jesus loves you and will always be there for you. Think about it. Every time something bad happens, such as an accident or worse, what do we frequently find ourselves quietly doing? Yep, praying. We ask many things of the Lord, and we pray for the medical staff that are caring for the injured party. Don't these prayers bring you some peace and comfort? Let's look at this a different way. God comes in and out of our lives daily. He is not just there when something goes wrong. He is there for the good in your lives as well. He is probably your biggest cheerleader, and you don't even know it. We have only to keep the faith and believe, and God will take it from there. Spend a few minutes of every day reading the words of God, or just have a quiet conversation with our Savior and Redeemer. You will come to cherish those moments. Would you be able to look back on your lives and come up with a list of all the times that you asked Christ to come and make something good happen? I couldn't begin to come up with such a list. I know I am blessed. I give thanks daily for the gifts in my life. Guess what? You also are blessed. Think about it. You have family, friends, food, shelter, and the list is just beginning. Don't worry about coming up with a list of Christ moments. Simply be thankful for the gifts and opportunities in your life. This, type, this title for this sermon was Christ Assurance to You and Me. There is a beautiful poem that I'm sure many of you are familiar with that truly highlights Christ assurance to you and me. The title of this poem is Footprints in the Sand, and I ask that you now sit back and close your eyes while I read this poem. One night I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky. In each scene, I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints. Other times, there were one set of footprints. This bothered me because I noticed that during the low periods of my life, when I was suffering from anguish, sorrow, or defeat, I could see only one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord, You promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I have noticed that during the most trying periods of my life, there have only been one set of footprints in the sand. Why, when I need you most, you have not been there for me? The Lord replied, The times when you have seen only one set of footprints is when I carried you. And that was written by Mary Stevenson. It was truly a special poem. So there you have it. As we bring the current church year to a close, we once again hear words from Christ and others that bring us peace and fill us with love. I close with words from John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Be assured, Christ is our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. Hallelujah. Amen. Our final, well, join me now in our prayer of thanksgiving. You have created us, O God, in the image of the one whom we have come to know through our times of worship. You have nourished us with good gifts for the journey of faith that lies ahead of us. With grateful hearts, we ask for your continuing spirit to sustain our daily lives as we follow the light of the world. May the love of God fill our hearts, enrich our lives, and lead us to do and act in ways that are pleasing to you. Amen. Our final hymn today is entitled, A Little More Like You. Now, as we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost bring you peace, bring you grace, bring you mercy. May his face shine upon you. 
May he enrich you. May he keep you safe during this trying time. But may his love always bring out the best in you. Go in peace.